good evening all welcome to this uh, new session that is exam going students oski mixed back to because nowadays recently in all the universities the spotters have been replaced by oskis so we'll try to discuss uh, regularly oski sessions from now onwards i was preoccupied with conference and uh, examination so i was not able to upload the video in between so this is the first oski you can pause the slide read all the questions try to attempt them then we'll go to the answers so coming to the first oski you can see this is the double contrast barium anema uh, where you can see there are multiple polypodal lesions noted within the colon there are multiple polypodal lesions noted projected within the colon so these are the multiple colonic polyps what are the syndromes which are commonly associated with this diagnosis except these are commonly associated with cowden cronite canada syndrome or lynch syndrome but it is not associated with cocaine syndrome it is also associated with uh, pudzager syndromes uh, gardner's uh, turcot syndrome these are all the common syndromes associated with polyps which is more dangerous whether is whether a pedunculated polyp or a sessile polyp yes sessile polyp is more dangerous because the malignancy easily spreads to the colonic mucosal surface than the pedunculated polyps does size of the polyp affect the risk of the malignancy yes uh, if the size is less than 5 mm there is 1% of risk if it is 5 to 9 mm it is to up to 2% of risk if it is 10 to 20 mm it is up to 10% of risk if it is greater than 20 mm there is 40 to 50% chance of malignancy so these are the common uh, kind of common uh, points you have to remember about colonic polyps next question you can pause the slide this is oski 2 uh, this is classically this diagnosis is nothing but called as calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor or pinbog tumor in this case there will be a central hyperdense uh, lesion which is nothing but the unerupted or impacted tooth surrounding that there are multiple calcific foci or densities which classically mimic driven snow appearance so what is the most probable diagnosis in this case this is classical pinbog tumor or calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor the what is the it is commonly associated with half of the coids or pinbog are associated with unerupted or impacted tooth here you can see this is the impacted tooth so here you can see this is the central uninterrupted impacted tooth surrounded by multiple cluster of uh, calcific opacities which give the classical snow, uh, driven snow appearance so remember driven snow appearance in case of pinbog tumor or calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor next case uh, this is the third osce 20 year old male with history of short stature gynecomastia now presented with abdominal pain and dyspnea tachycardia so here you can see there is a lobulated heterogeneously enhancing lesion with central hypodense scar which is showing calcifications predominantly uh, involving more of the left lobe of the liver so uh, pause the slide you can uh, see the questions next this what is the most probable diagnosis in this case this is nothing but classical case of fibrolamellar carcinoma uh, why the patient presented with gynecomastia because in fibrolamellar carcinoma there is tumor overexpression of aromatase p450 which converts steroids into estrogens because of high levels of estrone and estradiol there will be present their patient can present with gynecomastia and even high levels of estrone and estradiol suppresses testosterone levels what is the most common differential diagnosis focal nodular hyperplasia is the most common differential diagnosis for fibrolamellar carcinoma how to differentiate it from the fibrolamellar fo fo fibrolamellar carcinoma from focal nodular hyperplasia cct cmri technetium 99 scans and sulfur colloid scan can differentiate both the entities so this is one one such slide where you can see this is the focal nodular hyperplasia and this is nothing but fibrolamellar carcinoma here it will be you can see the central scar is homogeneous uh, hypoden uh, homogeneous hypodens with no calcifications whereas in fibrolamellar carcinoma it is heterogeneous with multiple calcifications and uh, there will be spoke wheel like configuration in uh, like flow pattern on arterial phase no spoke wheel type of arterial uh, flow pattern can be seen on uh, uh, fibrolamellar carcinoma uh, there will be increased activity and uh, technetium 99 sulfur colloid scans in focal nodular hyperplasia there will be no there will not be any activity on technetium 99 sulfur colloid scans in fm fibrolamellar carcinoma flc so these are the common uh, differential uh, points which can differentiate focal nodular hyperplasia from fibrolamellar carcinoma next 26 year female with thyroid swelling palpitations and tachycardia you can see pause the slide see all the questions you can see this is the enlarged th thyroid with uh, varied ecotexture predominantly alter ecotexture with raised vascularity and color doppler 
so this is nothing but what is the diagnosis this is classically the thyroid is enlarged predominantly enlarged with alter ego texture with raised vascular and color doppler which is nothing but is a case of graves disease what is this color doppler pattern is called as thyroid inferno what is the common differential diagnosis for graves it is hashimoto's thyroiditis what is the sensitive doppler flow indicator it is nothing but we have to take the psv speak systolic volume in the superior or inferior thyroid arteries and if it is greater than 40 cm per second it is usually graves disease and if the psv is less than 40 cm per second it is hashimoto's thyroiditis so remember graves and hashimoto's thyroiditis are common differential diagnosis and psv in the superior and inferior thyroid artery is a sensitive indicator to differentiate both next case uh, the here you can see two year year old with developmental delay dysmorphic phases hypotonia and ataxia you can pause the slide see all the questions so this is a classical case of jobot syndrome here you can see there is a bat wing configuration of fourth ventricle with nothing but prominent thick and elongated superior cerebellar peduncles giving the classical molar tooth appearance so what is the classical imaging appearance seen in this case it is molar tooth appearance what are the common cerebellar anomalies seen in this diagnosis you can see that there is a classical median cleft cerebellar median cleft in the cerebellum there will be absence or dysplastic uh, vermis you can see there is dysplastic vermis or absence of the vermis Uh, and also you can see absence of fiber decussation in superior cerebellar peduncles or pyramidal tracts there will be abnormal inferior olivary nucleus and there will be dysplasia and heterotopia of the cerebellar nuclei what are the other common conditions associated they can be ocular anomalies multicystic dysplastic kidneys hepatic fibrosis or coach syndrome polydactyly and occipital encephalocele what are the other common differential diagnosis for this case it is dandy walker malformation rhombencephalosynapsis and megacystinna magna so remember classical molar tooth sign in jobert syndrome uh, thank you recently i went to aoc aocr and thanks iri for giving a opportunity to speak on unique entities in neuroradiology i have met uh, all the seniors my colleagues and also juniors and my students thank you all